Mm. Am I wearing the same top? Yeah, kind of am. Was I too lazy to get changed? Yeah, kind of was. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Yes, I'm wearing the same top as I am in my one year later video. <laughs> Filming it on the same day. <laughs> um, I wanted us to talk about social media pressures. Now, the reason why I felt like I wanted to talk about this is purely because a lot of people seem to be struggling, myself included, at some point. <laughs> A lot of people seem to be struggling with social media pressures and when I talk about social media pressures I'm talking about things like the social media culture, the looking at perfectionism, the relationships uh, cultivated through social media, through what you are watching on social media, what the dangers of these are and how you can mitigate these dangers and mitigate these risks. I feel like it is so important. Uh, we don't have a lot of um, content creators who actually speak about things like this. I mean, there are videos out there. I'm not going to lie. However, with the social media content creators that I watch, I haven't necessarily seen much in terms of talking about how dangerous social media and self-destructive social media can be to those who are easily pressured and to those who feel... Um, the need uh to the need and hear me the need to conform they feel the need to conform to what they see on social media and a lot of the time as much as oh has the video started yeah it kind of has okay. a lot of the time social media has created this platform social media you know social media is beautiful okay in its essence and why it is there the connectivity the being closer to friends who are on other parts of the world the connectivity of it all but also learning new things um also dealing with uh, the struggles that you may have by realizing that you're not the only one there's a lot that social media has brought to the forefront things that never used to be talked about things that never used to be discussed that is fantastic but social media does also have a very destructive side and i won't lie to you i've been privy to being um exposed to this and also feeling the pressure of social media especially given the fact that i am a content creator and i'm always feeling the constant need to produce something the constant need to produce content the content constant need to look good all the time the constant need to just be perfect which is the image that social media projects especially when you look at things like instagram twitter is not necessarily the constant need to be uh perfect but twitter i feel has woken up this woke culture i'm sorry about that grammar um has given rise to this culture of being woke and being uh on a higher plane or higher level of thinking as a way to excuse callous behavior as a way to excuse um um um, um foul behavior you're woke so you can say whatever you want to say to somebody when at the end of the day you're just being horrible or you're just being mean or you're just trying to cover up your crazy ass way of living so you just want to you want to call it woke okay sure <laughs> okay okay um, so so the thing with me is that i felt the need to talk about this because i do feel like it doesn't only extend to content creators and when I talk about content creators, I'm not talking about just YouTubers. I'm talking about cinematographers. I'm talking about anyone who creates in the social media space. There are people who use social media just to connect with the world or to share parts of themselves with the world or share what they're wearing or share who they are or share their relationships or whatever without any need to um, have that liked or followed or whatever they're just some people who just genuinely use social media for the enjoyment of it and then there are so that social media content creators who use social media for work and we use social media to uh make streams of income and we use social media for other things so the pressures become a lot higher especially ooh, the sun hello the pressures become a lot harder, especially when you're in that space, because now you're con constantly 
uh, competing with trying to be perfect. That leads me to point number one, perfectionism. Let's go. Let's talk about perfectionism. And let's talk about how social media has created this environment of wanting to be perfect or projecting perfectionism because of what you see. Of course, I am going to use my social media counterparts, colleagues, friends that are on social media and show you a picture like this or like this or like this. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Right now, I'm actually doing this, but when I edit it, of course, there'll be pictures there. So this, 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 this. Um, you open your Instagram, and the first thing you see is an image like this. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, I don't have access to any of those things. I don't have a weave that costs 10,000 rand. I don't have a body like that. I don't have that bag that costs 80,000 rand. I don't have all of these things. And you're sitting there and you're thinking about how this is all you are consuming each and every single time you log into Instagram. Because of course, you are consuming what you have chosen to consume. I mean, that's the thing about social media. It's all on you. What you choose to consume is all on you. You are the one clicking the follow button. You are the one clicking the be friends with or whatever, whatever buttons they are. You are the one who's clicking those buttons to follow and consume that kind of content. So you can be sitting here watching your favorite YouTubers and they are amazing and they do makeup and they do fashion and they do uh, fitness and they do blah, blah, blah. And... You're sitting there and you're like, you know what? I want to show them my support by following them, but also at the same time, you aspire to these people. So in, in retrospect, in the beginning, you doing it for the right reasons. You aspire to have that kind of life. You, you feel motivated by them. They inspire you um, and all of that. But as you start consuming it over and over and over again, everything just sort of, for me personally, everything just sort of blends into one another. Everybody who does fashion content, they look great. They look beautiful. They're dressed like this. They're dressed for the seasons and whatever. But it sort of starts blending into one another that I just don't really see much of the difference anymore. But for many others who want that kind of life, who aspire to that kind of life, it does get to a point where the pressure to be perfect then hits home and it hits them tremendously. So now you follow these awesome, awesome fashion content creators or beauty content creators. And now the next immediate thing that you want are bomb clothes and bomb shoes and bomb bags and wigs that are 20,000 rand and blah, blah, blah. And the destruction of the part of that when it comes to social media is people end up doing really, 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 um, I don't wanna, I, I wanna use the right word. People end up doing things that they normally wouldn't do just so that they can get or try and live this kind of lifestyle. So the pressure becomes so much to be perfect, to always make sure that when you're out and about, even when you're going to the store, you've got your makeup on and you look flawless and you look to do. My mother used to love saying, well, it's a little bit to do, man. You know, you always need to make sure that you look perfect. And that life has been created by what you see constantly online, what you consume constantly online. And I used to do this and I fell into this trap maybe about two or three years ago, I fell into this trap where I was constantly consuming the beauty content and I was constantly consuming the fashion content that all I ever did with my money was buy makeup or buy clothes. And I had clothes. I had good clothes, but I still felt like the need to be better, the need to have better. Oh guys, I've got a new plant. I haven't named her yet but the need to be better and the need to have better, the need to be perfect. And how dangerous this is because you, you'll never, you'll never, what you see, not that you'll never be, we'll never be perfect. That's actually true. We'll never be perfect. But what you see 
in those social media posts and those social media videos, YouTube videos and all of that, is a whole lot of editing. And it's a whole lot of, um, 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 uh, you know, in terms of the clothes and whatever, there's a whole lot of money that's involved behind this. And what you see in that person's life is literally five minutes of their lives. Or if you see a 42 minute vlog of, of mine, it's literally increments of 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there over a number of days. And that's nothing. That's not a dent on, on, on what I've done in those few days. So whoever watches our social media content or consumes it, but doesn't have that uh, emotional strength and the emotional intelligence to know that th th this is just five minutes of this person's day. This is just you know, it, they, they work hard enough to make the money to buy those clothes and whatever, but I can't afford those clothes. So if it's, it's somebody with not that emotional intelligence to just consume and let go, it does get to a point where it becomes so destructive that it puts the pressure on that person who's consuming it to be perfect. And they end up doing things that they normally wouldn't do just so that they can live that life. And they forget that there's just a lot that comes into play. There's editing filters and there's this and, you know, your beauty content people and, you know, you buy the same palette that this person is buying and you're wondering, why doesn't it look so pop on me? There's a lot of editing that goes into that. That's why. Why is her skin so flawless? And why am I using the same products too? Why am I not perfect like she is? There's a lot of editing that goes into it. Because when you see that person life, it's a different story. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that in a bad way. That's just the reality of what it is. So there's social media creates this platform to be perfect because of what you see. And to those who don't have the emotional uh, intelligence and the emotional strength to actually just take that and leave it, take it, see it, drop it, it often becomes embroiled into their system so much that they feel like they need to change parts of who they are so that they can accommodate this kind of life. Problem number one, culture. So social media has created this culture as well. The social media around, like people, uh, people around our age group and our age demographic, not so much mine. I'm really talking about people that are in their 20s, early 20s. You watch them, you watch your uh, content creators and you watch all the people that you're following online and all their ins on their Instagram. And all you see is meeting up with friends, sitting on like at a table with so much food and drink and alcohol and being at the clubs and dress so beautifully and looking the part as well. And uh, just this culture of the good life. What do they call it? The soft life, right? That's all you see. So social media and content creators have put up this life that the girl next door, an easy palisa girl next door who's watching this person living this life wants this life. As much as you are seeing this part of their lives on social media, you're seeing literally an hour of their life. That's not how it is all day, every day. It isn't. Once that lunch is over, that person's going to go home, take off their makeup, go into slacks, relax, and probably eat an egg, a boiled egg for dinner. I'm not saying this in a mean way. Like, I'm trying to show that people are normal. Social media content creators are also normal. They can get home, and I can have had... Um, oysters and I, I could have veal and and be sipping on champagne and all of that and when I get home I just want a peanut butter and jam sandwich and that's the reality of how it is when the cameras are turned off right so but now to the person who is watching who doesn't have the emotional cues and intelligence to pick up that this is just a small fraction of this person's life they feel like this is the life that they want. This is the life that they want to aspire to. And honestly, listen, don't get me wrong. That's a beautiful life to aspire to. I want a soft life as well. I do. But at the end of the day, at what cost? 
And I feel like the people who watch this and see these people living these amazing lives are sitting there thinking, huh, what am I going to have to do to get hold of this life? Am I going to have to find a rich boyfriend? Am I going to have to do this, this? Am I going to have to end up selling kidneys and livers so that I can buy myself a Louis Vuitton bag? Or am I going to have to, am, what am I going to have to do? And a lot of the time, it's people making really, really unsafe and unsavory um, decisions so that they can be able to live this kind of life really really dangerous decisions destructive decisions so that they can be able to live this kind of life because this is the life that they see on social media so it's very very important to be careful about what you consume because social media has created this world of perfectionism of culture of 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 uh a certain culture that you you can live and and that that indicates that you're living your best life not so much and the third thing for me, which I feel like social media is perpetuating quite a lot right now, certain relationships, I call them social media relationships, so, social media relationships, relationships for the camera. Uh, we watch our favorite content creators and their partners, their partners who do this for them and do that for them and buy them nice things and da 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 da. And this is what we quantify a good relationship to be because now we're watching this and we want this this is the life that we want i want my partner to be able to take me to paris for my birthday and i want to be able to walk into chanel and walk out with six bags from chanel and i want to do this and we'll do this so this must be what a perfect relationship is like so to somebody who doesn't have the emotional cues again i come back to that to somebody who's easily chowed in by pressure from social media, they're going to fall for this. They're going to fall for this. And at some point, I did too. Hear me. There was a point where I was watching so much of couples channels. Right now, I can't stand couples channels. I can't stand them. Because I feel like it, it's a lie, did they? <laughs> like, that's honestly how I feel. I genuinely, my hands look so much darker than my face. It's crazy, the lighting. I genuinely feel like this is not what it is. And growing up and, and realizing that and being in a space where I have been with somebody who's got a lot of money and then I've been with somebody who is in the same financial bracket as I am and I've been with somebody who's in a lower financial bracket than me relationships are all different but they have the same problems what the hell mr sun thank you really so when you're sitting there watching your favorite content creator with their man or their woman or whatever and they're always posing for the camera and they're looking great and they're doing this and they're always dressed in the best clothing and they always did da 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 sure for five minutes of what you're viewing that's what you're seeing for that whatever time that they are in Milan on a trip or they are in uh, blah 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 wherever with their lover and they're doing this for their lover for Valentine's Day and they're doing that and you are equating that that small portion of their relationship to be what a perfect relationship should be that's what you are thinking that what a perfect relationship is if you're somebody who doesn't have that emotional intelligence, those emotional cues. Uh, Mr. Sun, hello. So you are thinking that, that that's what it's about. Because you don't have, how long have I been talking? Those emotional cues. And I feel like that's what social media, that's the monster that social media has created. Especially for young, for young people. That's the monster that it's created. And I feel like these are the things that you need to watch out for and look out for and always, always bring yourself to your values and what who you are and what you're about. And loving yourself, loving yourself enough to know that this is not for everyone. This life is not for everyone, you know, and at this at the end of the day, seeing that and aspiring or being motivated to have that kind of life one day and seeing all of that that see it as motivation but don't see that as the end all and be all because it isn't 
don't see that as what is perfect and what relationships should be about and all of that because that's not it again i say so i feel like um social media has created that beast the social media pressures have created that beast that then uh creates this another beast right it creates a person who ends up being very self-destructive it creates a person who suffers and struggles with emotional traumas and mental health issues anxiety you know you're constantly worried about how you're going to achieve this kind of life you're constantly worried about how you're going to do all these things a b c so you're constantly overwhelmed with everything that you see online and worried and wondering how you're going to make it happen for yourself that's what it creates that's the beast that it creates right so from what you watch you see this, this is now what's created from that. And now you're sitting and you become a, a, a much more um, conflicted human being because you, 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 you've just lost your core sense of who you are, what your values are, and what, what matters to you. Before you started seeing the wigs and the LV bags and the trips and the this and the this and the perfect relationships and whatever. Before you started seeing those things online, you were not that person. You never thought that uh, uh, an LV bag is me reaching perfection. You never thought an, uh, a 10K wig will be the one thing that's going to make me look prettier. You never thought that a trip overseas is by your partner or with your partner or whatever, flying business class and all of that is what's, what's deemed the perfect relationship. You never thought of those things until you started consuming social media. So the biggest thing that I feel to round off this video, which is sitting on 23 minutes, the biggest thing that I feel one should be very careful about uh, social media is it's going to be ever changing. Social media is going to ever be changing all the time, all the time. When you're here and when you're gone, constantly. There's always going to be something new. There's always going to be someone new. There's always somebody who's going to trend more than the other. There's always going to be, it's always going to be, social media is a very, it's like, it's so fleeting. Change. It's like this all the time. So the one thing that you can do to combat that is one, choose what you consume. Be very aware of what you consume. Consume only the things that grow you and make you better. And I'm not saying that watching all of these other things that we've mentioned, that you shouldn't, because sometimes those things motivate people. So that's good. But once you see that it's actually starting to impact you negatively, maybe, maybe click the mute button. If you're not quite ready to unfollow, fine. But maybe click the mute button for a little bit and consume things that fill you and that grow you and that um, spiritually, mentally enhance you. Things that make you feel better about yourself. Things that make you feel better about your body. Things that make you feel better about who you are. Things that speak to the true you. Things that speak to your core. One, very, very important to choose what you consume. Also, take your mental health very seriously. Your mental health is very, very important when it comes to social media. Because it is one of the things, social media is one of the biggest factors that contribute to a dip in mental health. Very, very huge. Because you're sitting there thinking, I want this, I want this, and you get anxious about it, and you get anxious about this, and you start worrying, and you start not sleeping, and you start this, this, and you're stressed out all the time, your hair's falling out, all of that stuff. Social media. One of the biggest contributing factors to, to people's mental health taking a huge knock. So choose to consume parts of social media that give, 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 uh, um... Choose to consume the things that give strength to your mental health, that make you stronger, that make your mental health powerful in such a way that it can't be shaken, no matter what you consume. There are, there are social media platforms that do that. There are social media platforms that do that. So it's very, very important to be aware of that. Own who you are. 
own your self, own your sense of self, own your values and live them. Whether you have this or you don't have this, whether you inspire to this or you don't inspire to this, live your true self as much as you possibly can because then you're doing yourself a favor. Then you are doing, you're, 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 you're growing yourself from the inside out. You're like, a, you're like a plant and you're just like, wow. You're growing yourself from the inside out. Then it helps you consume things without being emotionally impacted or mentally impacted by them. And there's no way that we can run away. There's no way we can run away from being uh, emotionally or mentally impacted by something. Coronavirus impacted us. Emotionally, physically, financially, mentally. So social media can do the very same thing. It can financially impact you. It can break you financially if you feel the need to follow that life and do whatever it takes. You can be sitting on a mountain of debt because you want to wear exactly what this person is wearing and that whole outfit is probably a hundred thousand rand. You're sitting now in financial debt for one outfit. Crazy. So own who you are, own your values, own what you're about. That's the one way in which you can combat uh, the, 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 the destruction that comes with social media sometimes. The pressures, the pressures that come with social media sometimes. All right, I'm going to end it there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this the video was impactful in some way. Um, uh, I used to struggle with these struggles as well until I became very, very, very particular as to what I consume. Um, um, things like uh, Twitter, Black Twitter, blah, blah, blah. I'm very, very careful about how much time I spend on Twitter, especially when people are going in on someone or something or, or all of that. I'm very, very particular about how much time I spend on, on platforms like that and what I choose to consume. So I feel like you can do the same thing for yourself. Um, very, very important. And yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The sun is going crazy, so I'm going to bounce. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!